Hey dudes, welcome back to Fims Presents RC on YouTube. Um, this is part two of how to restore your RC Nitro. So if you've got any old RCs that you're wanting to restore um, and you haven't checked out part one, go and check out part one. We covered um, the introduction and the basic gist of how to unstick a, a seized piston so a stuck piston in your uh, nitro engine we covered that in part one so if that's an issue that you're facing at the moment go and check that out this is part two now in part two we'll be, we'll be covering some of the other basics that you need to know before you get your rc back on the road um I know you're excited probably to get your old nitro going again. I mean, you've uh, you freed up your piston if that was your issue. Now hold your horses. There's a few other things that you'll want to know first. Um, now this model, apart from having its piston freed up, has not been touched yet, as I'm sure you'll know. Now, um, one thing you'll need to do before you do anything, so before you touch your air filter, before you take it off, especially if you have a foam air filter, you will want to... Turn it around that way so you can see, that's better. You will want to close your carb. Now you'll notice that this carb has been left fully open. Now that's not such a good thing, especially if you have a straight up filter, which I know some of them are, maybe if it's been replaced with a, a non-stock or some of the old Kyoshos have the straight up with the uh, little basket and the little red top that clips on the top. Now, you don't want to go yanking your air filter off unless you've closed your carb up. Uh, main reason being is you can drop crap. These filters are not too bad um, for doing that, but I know especially the old foam ones, as soon as you get a bit of nitro fuel on the old foam ones in the left sitting, they degrade into almost mush um, after, a, after a certain period of time. So, first things first, close your carb off before you start working on your engine, before you check your air filter. Right, so we've got our air filter off, guys. Just looking down the venturi there, the carb venturi, you'll notice we've got a slightly larger than one millimetre gap. I mean, I'll go about idle. Yeah, I suppose that's about right. You should be looking for pretty much a 0 0.7 to a one millimetre gap off your carb, um, your carb air idle gap there to set a steady idle. Um... But yeah, we've covered the basics of taking the air filter off. Um, there's no foam or anything stuck down there. I have had a good look down there with a light and, and there's nothing stuck down there, which is good. You can see the carb needle there. And that's what we're looking for. We're checking for anything that's fallen down there during when it was uh, sitting, which in this case, fortunately, it hasn't. Uh, and I think that's largely in part to it using a, um, one of these... Um, Funder Tiger paper filters that they used to use back in the day. It's basically like a small K&N filter. It's just a paper filter, cotton filter, um, as opposed to the foam variants, um, which are more prone to degradation. Right, so we've covered that. Second thing you'll want to do, get your 3-in-1 oil out, go round every bearing so both sides of your front drive shaft both sides of your rear drive shaft and you're looking for obviously your bearings here give them a good blasting of oil so in each side of there you've got your, uh, your your diff outputs we'll need a good oiling each side now when you're doing your oiling when you're putting your oil on your bearings, spin your wheels a little whilst you're doing it. So you're putting your oil on, so obviously you'll probably be tipped that way to get to uh, this diff out drive bearing here. Spin your wheels a little bit, helps it run into the bearing a bit better rather than just sitting on top. Right, so you've covered your air filter, you've covered your oil in. You'll be wanting to move on to tank next. So you go to your fuel tank. Never just chuck fuel in your fuel tank and try and rely on the inbuilt in-tank fuel filters. Uh, it may be clogged, there's a good chance it is clogged, even if it's the brass gauge bubble ones. Um, so you want to remove your tank, which I'm going to show you in a second. You remove your tank and I'll show you what to do with that now. Just give me a second and I'll come right back. Right dudes, got a Philips, got a JIS. 
Um, one thing to note before you get your drill out, don't take your drill, your power drill to um, old RCs to remove screws. Um, if there's anything that you can't get out by hand, um, it, it, a drill's probably not going to help you. You're going to end up rounding the screw out. I mean, you might get it if you put enough pressure on there. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend it. If you can't get it with a normal, so say if it's a JIS screw, a Phillips head screw, if you can't get it with that, try a smaller flat head that will go in um, your indentations in the top of your screw head in the button at the top. Um, but yeah, try and avoid power tools if you can. So I'm just going to take this tank out now. Right, so you've got your tank out. Now, fortunately with this one, the fuel nipple's at the top. Some have the fuel nipple at the bottom. Uh, can be a little irritating. Basically, what you want to do now is go and get yourself some nitro fuel, which here I have some Blue Thunder. Give it a mix up if it's been sitting for a while. This is 25% nitro fuel. It must be fresh. So the fuel that you're putting in here must be fresh. Pretty irritating. There we go. Now you don't need a lot at first. You see we've got, I don't know, quarter of a tank, third of a tank. Right, so both nipples are unblocked because I've got fuel coming out. So I know that both nipples aren't blocked. Give it a shake. Now this is your first stage of flush this. And the reason I say that is, you'll notice that you think, well, why can't I just do this once? Well, this first stage flush is to get large debris out of your tank. So you will open this up not down a drain so if you've got an appropriate container um, maybe you could dump that in your uh, non-recyclable waste but not down the drain this is toxic to aquatic uh, life so if it does find its way back into the water course I know it's not a lot of it but there's no point in damaging the environment any more than it has been so find a receptacle to pour into so you've done your first one so let's find our receptacle first one so let's find our receptacle so that's got rid of your main contaminants from your tank but you'll, what you'll notice is if you can see here there is some fuel residue now this is usually if the car has been sat I guarantee you now because there's none at the back here you will notice that's quite clean the car's probably been sat at a slight angle facing forward while it's been sat and whatever residue has been sat in the tank uh, the nitromethane has obviously um, completely evaporated and what it's been left with is the oil deposits inside the tank now you don't want them left in obviously when you're running um, because they will stick in your carbon. Do you know that little carb needle that we looked at before when we looked down the venturi? That will block up and it will gunk up, gunk up and you'll get reduced performance and a couple of other issues stemming from that. So this is your second stage. So you're done with your nitro fuel now. And I know that's wasted maybe two-thirds of a tank of fuel. I say wasted. You've got to do it. It's an essential part of, of, of restoring is cleaning out your tank properly. So you just leave that to sit now. So just leave that somewhere on a shelf. Come back to it in about an hour's time. And then give it a shake. Rinse out. Have a quick vis visual check for uh, any debris, any deposits left in there. If it needs a third flush, give it a third flush. Now, this brings us to our drive line and chassis. 